Right, we were called up, uh, we didn't know where we were going to, we were called up for a, um, for a camp in Bloemfontein. We knew something was on the go because we, previously we had gone on other clandestine camps in Palabor, etc. Uh, we went to Bloemfontein for this, this, this training camp and whilst doing this training camp, uh, they, they, they filtered us, they got rid of all the sick, lame and lazy guys that, that didn't really make the grade. And um, Colonel Breitenbach called us all aside, the, the remaining, um, the remainder of us, and he said to us, right, this is a deal, this is what we're going to do. We're going to uh, attack this base in Angola called, called Kasinga. And suddenly it was quite a lot of anxiety. We, we knew, we, we had always been building up to something like this, but um, we never knew when it was actually going to take place or how and when. Now, now, now the day had arrived. Anyway, they flew us from Bloemfontein to, uh, to Grootfontein. We arrived there in the C-130s, the very same C-130s that we used in the operation. Uh, they kitted us out there. You know, they were talking about anti-aircraft guns situated there, and they had so many tanks and so many armored cars and over a thousand troops on the ground, and they were all armed with, with the, um, the AK-47s and so on. Anyway, we flew to, to uh, Grootfontein, we had a nice meal there, but the ammo, my goodness, it was hand grenades, me being number two uh, LMG, I had to carry my own ammo, plus I had to carry uh, belts for the LMG, 7.62 rounds, can't remember exactly how many of them now, but it was roughly about 250 rounds of ammunition in addition to my normal R1 magazines. Uh, we had three or four hand grenades, we had a mortar bomb, we had food for two days, we had smoke bombs, medical kits. They woke us up at about two o'clock in the morning for um, coffee and rusks before we fitted shoots. Oh, and they were loading these buccaneers and, and, uh, and uh, fighter aircraft with bombs, but real bombs. And that for me was a uh, I knew then that we were going into something really serious and real here. Yeah, I, I remember seeing those bombs on trolleys getting wheeled along and uh, there was four or five guys pushing one bomb across to the aircraft and, and other guys were loading them and the, the Mirage pilots were in and out of the cockpits and, and, the, and there was a flurry of activity all over the, the Buccaneers and the, the Mirages and our aircraft. And, it was a lot of tension. Then we flew, uh, we flew roughly about four hours because our peak time was, HR was at four minutes past eight o'clock, day, day, uh, daylight drop. Very frightened. We were only youngsters. We'd never experienced anything like this before. It was a frightening experience because we were flying very, very low. So it was uh, air pockets and uh, turbulent flight. We came in very low, the Mirage, we could see the Mirages through the windows on, in, en route to Kasinga, so we knew they were escorting us, so we could see them just, just sitting there looking at the faces of your, your fellow paratroopers in the aircraft. You could see the, you could see the tension on the faces and the, the paleness and the anxiety, the tremendous anxiety. And, and for me, myself, it was, it was a very fearful uh, moment in my life. I would have preferred to have been just somewhere else at that point in time. Eh? Anyway, here I was and we were going in for it and um, who knows whether we would ever come out. I mean, each and every one of us uh, didn't know what was to be expected and um, we knew we were going in for something very big.